Sarah Vitale. On this episode of Lauren in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make chicken pot pie. It's an American classic and I have yet to find someone who doesn't adore it. This recipe is very easy, um, very affordable, and um, yeah, pretty much makes the best chicken pot pie you're ever going to have. So let's go over the ingredients to get started. You're going to need some chicken thighs that are skinless and boneless and cut into about one inch pieces. You're going to need some chopped up celery, onions, and carrots. You're also going to need some chicken stock, and then frozen peas, frozen pearl onions, some all-purpose flour, heavy cream, some butter, fresh chopped parsley, fresh chopped, fresh chopped thyme, and you're also going to need salt and pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and puff pastry, which I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. The reason I don't have it out is because with puff pastry, you want to keep it as cold as possible, so it's in the fridge until right before we're going to need it. So let's get started by going to the stove and start cooking. I have a large soup pot over medium high heat with a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. It's nice and hot, so now I'm going to add in my chicken. Now you can use if you wanted to, because traditionally this is made with chicken breast. I don't like to use chicken breast when I make like a stew or just something that takes a little bit longer to cook, only because it becomes tough, rubbery, and tasteless. And I think chicken thighs, well dark meat chicken anyway has fantastic flavor, it's very inexpensive. You can get up to two pounds for less than two dollars. So I always use, you know, I always use dark chicken, dark meat chicken. So I'm gonna let this cook for about five minutes or until it's nicely browned and then we'll add in our veggies. To my chicken that's been cooking, I'm gonna add in my chopped veggies. Just get them all in there. If you need to give it a little bit more olive oil at this point, you can go ahead. I don't think it needs it. I'm gonna season up my veggies with just a little salt and pepper. It also brings out the moisture. Give this a nice toss. And I'm gonna let this cook for around seven to eight minutes until the veggies start to cook down. This looks perfect. Now to this, I'm gonna add my butter. Now what we're essentially going to be doing is making a roux, but we're not gonna make it separate. We're just going to make it right in the same pan, just because it's easier and, you know, well, I'm a bit lazy. I like to do things as fast as possible. So just mix this around until the butter is pretty much melted. And then you're going to add in your flour. Now, when you make a roux, it's really important to know that the flour and the butter is always the same amount. So if you have four tablespoons of butter, you want four tablespoons of flour. You know, just one to one. So just give this a big stir, and you're going to cook this for about a minute so it gets rid of that raw flour taste. It doesn't taste gluey. So just stir this around just for a minute. Perfect. So now we're just going to add in our chicken stock. Give that a stir. Now I have my heat up to medium high. Now this is going to come up to a boil. Once it's up to a boil, you're going to let it cook for about 15 minutes or so, and then I'll show you what the next step is going to be. That looks perfect. So now I'm going to add in some heavy cream, just to add a little richness. Nothing wrong with that, right? Oh, it's gonna be delicious. I'm so excited for dinner. Okay, now we're gonna add our frozen pearl onions, which have been defrosted a little, almost all the way through, and our frozen peas. Now you can add fresh pearl onions and fresh peas um, if you want to, but peas are not available this time of year, so I'll use frozen. And pearl onions, I never buy fresh because they are not the easiest thing to clean and they're very fidgety. So, I'm gonna let this cook for 10 more minutes and then I'll meet you at the counter to assemble the whole thing and bake them. I just took my filling off the stove, it looks perfect. I'm gonna add in my fresh chopped parsley and thyme. Adds nice brightness to this. Love fresh herbs. Give that a stir. You can put fresh dill in here if you wanted to. I really love the combination of the parsley and the thyme. So, you want to preheat your oven to 400 at this point. I also have an egg wash here, which is just an egg beaten with a little bit of uh, water and puff pastry and your ramekins or oven safe bowls, any, anything you have that you can put in the oven. You can also make this in just a really large, you know, baking dish. Um, all I'm doing, and these are my grandmother's, as you can see, really, really old, but I love them. Now all I'm doing is just oiling these a little bit and you can also butter them with a little bit of butter if you wanted to. Okay, we have that ready. 
Now, puff pastry. This puff pastry was given to me by my husband's aunt, so I'm really grateful because I hate making homemade puff pastry. But, you know, I would normally buy it, so for this you should probably use some store-bought puff pastry. Very easy to find, right in your frozen section in your supermarket. I'm going to lightly flour my board. And just tip this on your flour board. I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing very easily. I'm just going to unfold it. Just unfold it. And now just to make myself my life a little bit easier. I'm going to cut this in half because it's a really big sheet. If you are using frozen store-bought puff pastry, you should just use one sheet should be fine. Also, you don't have to use puff pastry because you can use just regular, like, you know, basic pastry, which I have a recipe on. If you want to just make plain basic, you know, pastry dough, you can follow that recipe and then you can top these with you know, that pastry dough. So I'm just going to roll this out just a tad because it's a little bit thicker than I want it to be. I'm going to move this around because puff pastry has a lot of butter in it. So you want to work this as quickly as possible. This looks great. Now I'm going to take the bowl I'm going to be cooking this in and I'm going to give it a guide. Now I'm going to want to cut this about an inch bigger than the bowl actually is only because I need to use the sides to stick to the sides of the bowl. So we have one. My dough is cut and I'm going to take my egg wash and I'm just going to brush the sides of the bowl or whatever you're baking this in just because I want the dough to stick to something. So just go ahead and do that to all of them. I filled up all my bowls and I covered them with the pastry. Just make sure you Pinch the sides. Now I work, you have to work really, really quickly when you're dealing with puff pastry because it's mostly butter and you'll have a mess otherwise. You want to make a little indentation so that the air can escape. Great. Now I'm going to brush the tops with some more egg wash. And last step, just sprinkling them tops with some salt and pepper just to give the pastry some flavor. Just gonna do another little opening here. Good, now these are gonna go into a preheated oven 400 for 20 to 25 minutes so that they're lightly golden brown. My pie pie is baked for 25 minutes and look at me, dun da da da, I'm ready. This is really, really hot but I really just wanna show you the filling. First of all, how perfect is that puff pastry, huh? Oh, good, look at that, look at that. Incredible, isn't it? I'm just going to take a little bite. I don't want to take one too big because I will seriously burn myself. Mmm. It's, I don't know, it's just, it's the most delicious thing you can possibly think of. It's the most delicious thing you can eat when you think of chicken pot pie. It's not gummy. It's not so thick that it has no moisture to it. It's so perfect. Perfectly balanced with flavors. The pie, the crust is incredible, by the way. Puff pastry is the way to go. But that's it. It was quick and easy. You can do it yourself. You can either use chicken breast or chicken thighs. But please, if you're daredevil, try the chicken thighs just for this one time and see the big difference that it makes. It keeps everything really moist and the chicken is not rubbery and dry and tough. It's definitely soft. Lots of flavor. Perfect. That's it. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Now you need to go make this chicken pot pie. I know you want to. So get in your kitchen, get cooking. But before you do that, go to www.learningkitchen.com and I'll see you next time. Bye.